You're watching Jim Cannell on Today. This is Bible Study for the 21st Century. Friends, I'm so happy to introduce to you in a moment Ryan Hembry, who is one of the Hembry clan, son to Rod and Janice Hembry, who you met last week. Uh, he is vitally involved in Bible discovery, and he's got a great uh, background, interesting story. Young guy, millennial, you're, you're going to enjoy him. And uh, then after that, I'm going to continue as we look at Jesus' harsh words to the scribes and the Pharisees in the book of Matthew, chapter 23. Jim Kennel on Today is a program dedicated to the teaching of the good news of Jesus Christ. This all through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. JCT also brings to you encouraging testimonies and stories from Christian leaders all over the globe. If this program has added value to your life, would you please consider becoming a partner? To do so, simply contact us by phone, mail, or online. As I said off the top, Ryan Hembry joins me today. All this month I'm featuring the Hembry family uh, who are vitally involved in a ministry that's been on for years and years called Quick Study, which is now called... Bible Discovery. Bible Discovery. R Ryan, welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, I'm behind the camera for well, this one. Yeah, but you're also on the camera. You're kind of a man for all seasons. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> do, it, do what you can, right? That's right, yeah. Do what you can. I mean, you're, you're born and bred in it. I mean, your DNA is full of it. I don't mean you're full of it. I mean, you're, yeah. you know what <laughs> I mean? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You know, I yeah. mean, really, your, your whole family culture is uh, television, ministry, pastoring. I mean, and it goes back, I think, are you, you're fifth generation, right? I'm a fifth generation Christian. That's right. Yeah. And I can remember growing up watching you and my dad, Rod, right. on uh, Crossroads. Oh. So that's how, that's how long I've been involved with this whole you're ordeal. Making, you're making me feel, feel very <laughs> ancient here, Ryan. Uh, I, I've asked your parents this. I want to ask you, because everybody has their own perspective. Uh, Quick Study is doing so well. Mm -hmm. Why the name change? I think we felt that there was a direction change coming. And uh, Bible discovery really encompasses what we're trying to accomplish here. We really do want to discover the Bible. You know, uh, the other thing was to... You know, quick study can be interpreted as a number of things. Like, what is quick study? Yeah. You know, a lot of things claim to be quick studies. Mm -hmm. um, so we really wanted the name to be prominent. When people hear Bible discovery, oh, well, we know exactly what we're getting. So, yeah. And it's just started. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of infrastructural change you have to make. I mean, websites and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, different uh, signatures, different looks. And because you also are an editor, I'm sure you've been in the thick of it, right? Oh, I got to tell you, this is, it's, it's a lot of work editing. A lot of people don't know how much is involved. You know, a lot of people think it's, uh, you know, copy and paste and mm. this and that. But no, it's a lot of work. But uh, I really have to thank my brother-in-law, uh, Matlock, because mm. he's really taken over a lot of the things that I used to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, you've had a, uh, a real interest in... Um, the, not the debate, but the controversies and the discussions that have prevailed over the years about uh, creation, old earth, young earth. Yeah. You've even done some television work on, on this. Why the interest in the, in the creation story? You know, I'll tell you the truth. You, t you tell stories about um, your prophecy, about wanting to learn more about prophecy, and you got kind of tired of all the interpretations. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you set out to decide that you were going to take a year or however long it was going to take and just kind of do things yourself. Yeah. Well, it's kind of that same sort of thing with me. You know, there's a lot of interpretations, a lot of, uh, you know, people, you know, there's a lot of debates, as you said, mm. basically. But I, I just wanted to know, I wanted to take an honest look at what the Bible says and what the facts say. And uh, I, I came to the conclusion that, uh, well, I just, that the Bible should be the ultimate authority. Mm. Um, yeah, so. And of course, the Bible, uh doesn't uh, fill in all the blanks, does mm -hmm. it? I mean, there's a lot about the Bible that uh, 
itself says is mysterious, mm -hmm. you know, and there are some things I think we won't have answers to until we get to, to be with the Lord. But you've done some television work on this, right? I have, yeah, absolutely. Did you have your own program or, or was it just specials that ran in segments on the Quick Study show? Well, I'll tell you, it started uh, back in 2010, actually, just right. after the passing of my grandfather. Yeah. And uh, we had just taken a trip to the Creation Museum in Kentucky. Right. And I picked up a book. And I didn't know really why I picked it up, but it was called Taking Back Astronomy by Dr. Jason Lyle. Mm. And when I read that book, I realized it was such an inspiration to me because what it was doing was it was taking uh, cosmology and it was giving the glory back to God. Mm. Because often, too often, the glory is not given to God, but to just chance, chance processes and things like that. Mm. So I really began to develop a passion uh, to give the glory back to God. And that's kind of how it started. So it started, I began to do the weekend edition at that time called Quick Study. Uh, I did a segment called Cosmic Mysteries. And that's what I did. I taught astronomy from the biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and then it kind of advanced from there. Now you were doing some studies in this field too, right? I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not as though you were just a layman. Yeah. Uh, uh, where were you studying and what did you study? Well, to be honest, like I, I had taken up an interest uh, since elementary school, really, yeah. and I had several books on the on the topic. Really, I'm I'm a lot I'm really self taught, mm. um, but as I started to read these textbooks and things on the subject, I began to become aware of these different things. Switching gears, mm -hmm. uh, I've interviewed your dad. I've interviewed your dad, your mom, and in both cases, talked about that health crisis your dad faced a few mm. years ago, this stroke. You're his son, you're a part of this television ministry. Uh, you saw the impact of the stroke on your dad. Uh, it must have been a very difficult few weeks for you guys. You know, when, when a child sees his father that he's mortal and that he could lose his life, mm. that's a really scary thought mm -hmm. and a really scary feeling. Because when you grow up, your dad is the strong man who sure who never, you know, can never die, yeah. right? It yeah. was the same with my grandfather. When yeah. he passed, it was such a shock. Yeah. So here for the first time, I, I realized that things might not turn out okay. And what were we, what were we gonna do? How did you deal with that? Well, I turned to God right away. And because that's what I was taught. I was always taught to turn to God right away. Yeah. And he will be your strength, and he was. And we gathered together as a family. We, we began to pray right there in the hospital. And I just, we just begged God, you know, just please heal him because we need him here. Hmm. So it was a very scary time. Now, your mother, as she steps back from it, and I mean, she was going through it like nobody. I mean, being your, you know, being your dad's wife. And, yeah. Uh, she's able to look at it now fairly objectively and see that, uh, the ministry was in need of change, and this thing, as horrific as it was, catalyzed some significant change. And even what we have today with Bible yes. discovery, yeah, maybe a part of the impact of that uh, life accident, that stroke. I firmly believe that 100%. Yeah. Because what it did, it did change things. Yeah. And uh, you know, he couldn't tape for the first little while, yeah. and we just had to keep trying. He wanted to so bad and that was really hard to watch. What was it like for you watching that? I mean, when he first tried and couldn't. I was, it was really upsetting because uh, it was something that cut, had come so naturally to him before. Yeah. I mean, he was just born into it, yeah. you know, and to watch that he all of a sudden now couldn't do it. He didn't have the physical ability yeah. to do it. Yeah, it was really scary. And so as he began to, to tape, we were just watching, we were all praying and we got together and it did, it did, uh, help us to really take the time to stop and to think about things. What do you uh, think is gonna happen with this ministry? My sense is it's gonna explode. I, I, I'm not just an optimist, that's just my kind of educated, if you will, 40 years in broadcasting experience speaking here, but how, how, do, you, how do you see it? Well, I, I hope that's the case. I mean, the way I look at it is that this is God's ministry yeah. and I'm just happy to be going along with the ride. You know, I'm just honored that if God can use me for anything in his, in his work, then I'm honored for that. I don't want to get in his way. I don't want to embarrass him in any sort of way. And you're, you're, you're very equipped technologically. I mean, you're, you're high profile and very experienced now on the internet, for instance. 
And you started live streaming almost before anybody else in the world did, yeah. certainly in terms of Christian ministry. Yeah, I think it was in 1993 or something like I that. I mean, maybe. back yeah. then people didn't know what live streaming was. No, I mean, it was funny, and we were all gathered around the computer watching this, you know, this little box. <laughs> uh, look at this live stream, you, yeah, know, or, yeah. you know, but that's what it was. Do you think that, uh, and, and you're, a, you're a millennial, uh, mm -hmm. you're part of that generation, um, do you think that the uh, internet and live streaming and just basic um, high tech, social media, all that kind of stuff is going to replace, if not already replacing, conventional television? Well, I think it's, I think it's been going that way for a long time now. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of uh, people my age, millennials, most of us don't have traditional television. Most of us use, you know, streaming services like yeah. Netflix and, yeah. and all of that. And I think that is the way that things are going. It's also cheaper, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're a young adult, just newly married and getting started in life, uh, save, saving a few bucks uh, any way you can makes a lot of oh, sense. Oh, for sure. Tell me about your family, and I'm talking about your family. Well, I have my wife, my beautiful wife, Jasmine. Yeah. Um, she's a real godsend. Yeah. Um, God really, he did give her to me. Yeah. I got married later in life. Yeah. Uh, I was 29, turned 30 on the honeymoon. Ooh. And I had prayed to God, please let me be married before I'm 30. <laughs> so he answered that prayer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we have a, an amazing son, mm. Oliver. We call him mm. Ollie. Mm. And uh, he is a lot like his mom. He's brilliant. And uh, he's so calm, too. Mm. He's three years old. And he's the calmest little boy. Hmm. I, I don't know. God has really blessed me hmm. because me as a child, I was not that way. You were not calm. No, I was not calm at all. I was, I was getting into trouble. You know, my dad tells you the stories. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, he's such a great, I, I couldn't have asked for a better gift. Hmm. I love him so much. You know, I often said uh, in the early days of our child rearing, after our firstborn was born, I learned a lot about how God loves us by the way I loved my son. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, it's almost like uh, uh, there's a new compartment in your heart that opens up that you didn't know you had. It's right, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's just amazing how uh, that relationship with your you know, father to son, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It is. I got uh, a minute to go, Ryan. Um, in your um, capacity here now, you, your official, do you have an official title? Yeah, generally it's just uh, science and apologetics is my, is my field. Science and apologetics, yeah. plus you are, do a major uh, uh, grunt work with editing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and you do other things as well. Um, is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? As long as the Lord gives me breath. I, yeah. I will do whatever he wants, go wherever he wants me to go, do whatever he wants me to do. Whether or not it means working with your dad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it remains to be seen, but I, I hope so. Yeah, well, it's always great to uh, sit down with you. As you know, you and I do it all the time because yeah. you edit my show and you, you direct my show. And so we connect on a regular basis. But nice to talk to you this oh, way. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Ryan. I'll be back with more uh, right after this short break. JCT TV is the official voice of WOW, working for orphans and widows. Jim Cantillon is the founder of WOW and has been ministering to orphans and widows in distress for 18 years. WOW's focus is home-based care for the dying. The horizon is vast, with thousands of the least of these in Africa and India. WOW depends on your generous support. To connect with us, you can call us at 1-800-969-9551 or you can visit us online at wowmission.com.
I don't want you to get depressed reading <laughs> uh, Matthew 23. I mean, he, he's, Jesus is really slamming the established religious orthodoxy of his day. Uh, it's not that he didn't, he didn't, you know, love these guys. Of course he, he did. I mean, God so loved the world. That he, you know, God is no respecter of persons. But these scribes and Pharisees, these religious leaders, set themselves up really for a big fall. And, uh, you know, so Jesus is going through what we call the woes. You know, there's various woes here in Matthew 23. Uh, picking up in verse 14, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Now believe me, when you hear these words from the Son of God himself, you should be concerned. And there were some rabbi, or some uh, Pharisees who were, and came round. You remember the story of Nicodemus in uh, John chapter 3. Uh, Paul the Apostle was, uh, was a Pharisee. Um, Joseph of Arimathea, who took Jesus' body down from the cross and ritually um, defiled himself by so doing, touching a dead body. He was a Pharisee. So, you know, Jesus had a heart for these men. It's just that they were so bound by the rules with which they bound the everyday person that, well, they were in trouble. Now, l look what he says here. You devour, you devour widows' houses. What's that mean? It means they took advantage of the vulnerability and the weakness of a widow's house in that she had no man to defend her. And they would take things from her. They would sometimes impose themselves on her sexually. Uh, they, they basically would uh, uh, abuse her emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, without any recourse on the part of the widow. That's what he means by you devour widows. I mean, this is nasty stuff, okay? And sometimes, you know, religious leaders get so full of themselves that they feel that they're above the law. And the irony is, they're the ones who are supposed to be, you know, purporting to uh, not only uh, preach, but defend the law. They weren't above the law, Jesus is saying. And for a pretense, okay, and it is a pretense, those of you who are devouring widows houses, you, you make these long prayers. Well, obviously, long public prayers. The whole point of a long public prayer is to be heard and to impress people. Prayer should be short, friends, and as much as possible, private. Uh, sometimes we're called on to pray publicly. We have to resist the temptation to be self-aware when we pray publicly, not make a speech, and not be long. It's a simple principle that I think uh, has profound implications. But he said, because of this, you know, you're one thing in the dark with a widow. You're another thing in a public with your prayers. You're going to receive an even greater condemnation, Jesus says. He warns them. And this is, this is why it's called a woe, all right? So uh, he says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, verse 15, hypocrites. You travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you yourselves. Woe. Proselyte, uh, in the Greek language, I'm no Greek scholar, but I can get along with a, with a Greek dictionary, means one who has arrived, a stranger. In other words, someone who's come in from outside. And this is what a proselyte is. It's one who's come into faith, into the community of faith from the outside. Right? That's what a proselyte is. They, they've transitioned. Uh, that's what he's talking about. And, and, and he's not talking about Jesus. He's not talking about evangelism, the sharing of one's faith here. No, not at all. He is speaking, and hang in with me here because this is a little bit of a history lesson. He's speaking in a culture of proselytism where, for example, years before Christ, John Hyrcanus, who was the last of the Maccabean priest kings who ruled Judea, he had offered Idumean Gentiles, these were outsiders, the alternative, get this, of death, exile, or circumcision. And circumcision meant conversion to Judaism. But it was much more of a cultural than a spiritual thing. 
And of course, most people would opt, you know, for the circumcision thing. We're talking about men here. Like women didn't factor into these discussions about uh, proselytizing in those days. Uh, these forced conver uh, conversions introduced forced members of the Pharisaic sect who ultimately were never trusted as true Jews. In fact, there was a, a proverb among the uh, Pharisees that no one should trust a proselyte, even to the 24th generation. Uh, in Jesus' words, they were made twofold more the child of hell, that is, the proselyte was. Not only because he was coming from the outside into a sect that was so absolutely uh, detached from what it taught in terms of how it acted, but they were also coming into a sect that was nowhere near uh, the kingdom of heaven. Now, you remember Jesus did say on one occasion to a young scribe, that is a, uh, a lawyer, uh, a lawyer of the Mosaic law, you are not far from the kingdom of heaven because he met Jesus on the level of the great commandment. Here is O Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This young lawyer was there. Jesus was there. And in the context of that discussion, he said, you know what? You're not far from the kingdom of heaven. So it wasn't as though these guys were forever, you know, beyond the pale. But what Jesus is saying here is that you want to, you, you Pharisees, you, you go out there, you go, you'll go across the ocean to, to, to get a proselyte, uh, not because you're leading them to faith, it's because you're leading them to yourself, making them another affirming member of your sect. Um, not going to work. Um, if anything, you're leading them farther from the kingdom of heaven than not. So you compass sea and land, you go anywhere, you proselytize, but Jesus will make the point in another case where there's real proselytizing going on. That is somebody coming from the darkness into the light of Christ, that nobody does that except the Father draws him. Meaning that in terms of a genuine coming to faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son Jesus, um, it's a purely supernatural work of the Father himself. It's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. And it is God's initiative, not ours. In fact, the faith that we possess right now, it has nothing to do with anything we've earned. It has purely and solely to do with the grace of God and his gifting faith to us. And it's something we should, um, we should never forget. Okay? Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the third woe. In verse 16, where is it? Oh, there we go. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he's obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. For which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that's on it, he's obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. For which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Now this seems a little obscure and hard to follow. I'll try to help you with it. Oaths, swearing, oaths, were ingrained in the culture. And Jesus had no time for them. Now the time, speaking of time for this Bible teaching segment is pretty much over. And so I'll pick up where I left off next week. You might want to take the time here and just read through uh, this 23rd chapter and just kind of get yourself prepared for what it is I'll be teaching. I'll be back with more right after this.
friends, as you know, Jim Cantillon has been offering Cantillon's casual commentary as a Bible study supplement to his ongoing exposition of St. Matthew's Gospel on JCT TV. He's excited to offer Volume 4, which completes the Matthew study. The Transfiguration, Triumphal Entry, Crucifixion, and Resurrection of Jesus Christ are all covered in this volume. Like the first three volumes, it's concise, captivating, and casual. To order your copy, you can call, write, or go online. Write to Jim Cantillon today, Post Office Box 989 Burlington, Ontario, L7R3Y7, or call us at 519-415-8341. You can also order online at jimcantillontoday.com. Request Cantillon's Casual Commentary Volume 4, and for a gift in any amount, it will be sent to you. When you place your order, also consider becoming a monthly partner. Remember, your gifts help us build this ministry. Friends, I really, really appreciate the fact that you watch the program and that you enjoy it and that you respond. It's great. I'm getting lots of letters, lots of emails, lots of phone calls. Keep them coming. Uh, if you don't have one or even all four of these, you need to ask for them. This is Canlon's Casual Commentary. It's my journey through Matthew. Uh, a lot of stuff I can't talk about on the show just simply because of time, and it's in here. I've done it in these this format so that uh, it's easy to mail it to you in an envelope. It's also easy to put in a purse in your back pocket. You know, it's you can stuff it in your Bible. It's very convenient. It's about 160 pages when all said and done in small print. But uh, you, you can ask for that. Remember your best donation, will you? When you ask for it, help uh, keep this program on the air. But I want to tell you, this program is brought to you by a heart's concern on my part and my wife's part. It's 18 years now working with orphans and widows. We call it WOW. You've seen the commercial, the ad, whatever you want to call it, on our show a little earlier. Um, we work with the least of these. We work with the lowest of the low. We work with people who are diseased and in many cases dying because of HIV and AIDS and complications thereof. Um, we're dealing with um, everything from medical crises to food security, but essentially we're visiting orphans and widows in their distress. As James in 127 tells us is the ultimate religious expression. Uh, the kind of religion God endorses, James says. We're trying to do that. We're trying to be a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. And so I'm calling on you to support WOW. Uh, the, you know, JCT is a part of WOW now, and, and we are the official voice of WOW. And together with your help and my help and the Word of God together, <laughs> we're going to make a difference. And thank you for making a difference. Contact us, Jim Cantillon today, P.O. Box 989, Burlington, Ontario, L7R 3Y7. If you're sending a check, make it payable to Jim Cantillon today. Or visit us online at jimcantillontoday.com and click support.